Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will learn about the working of a transformer and the generated EMF equation. First of all, what do you mean by a transformer? Transformer is a static device which transfers electrical energy from one circuit to another circuit. So one circuit means primary circuit to the secondary circuit. So what do you mean by a primary circuit? Primary circuit means which one is connected to the source that is called primary circuit. First of all, just we will revise the construction of a transformer. The transformer consists of two parts mainly that is iron core and second one is windings. Okay, this is windings. There are two windings. This is first winding, this is second winding. Which winding is called first winding? So, which winding is connected to the source that is called primary winding. Which winding is connected to the load that is called secondary winding. Primary winding can be represented as 1 or P, P for primary. Secondary winding is represented as 2 or S, secondary. So, the source is connected to the primary winding. Then, the load is connected to the secondary winding. So, the from uh, this transformer is transfers the electrical energy from primary to the secondary without changing its frequency that is F. And one more important point is this iron core consists of laminated sheets by combining the all thin laminated sheets we can construct an iron core. Iron core is made up of steel. The windings, windings can be made up of copper. When AC source is connected to the primary winding, AC voltage is applied to the primary winding, then AC alternating current will pass through the primary winding. Alternating current will pass through the primary winding. When alternating current is passed, then alternating flux will be produced across the winding. Alternating flux will be produced across the winding. This alternating flux, alternating flux means if there is a alternating voltage, waveform is like this, alternating voltage. And again current is also alternating current, so same like voltage waveform. Then alternating flux, alternating flux also in the form of same waveform because it is also alternating. Flux is represented by phi, voltage is represented by I, current is represented by I. These all are with respect to time T or omega T. So this is the alternating flux. Now coming to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. When a constant conductor placed in a alternating flux or moving flux, then EMF will be induced across that conductor. This is the Faraday's law 1. So, by the Faraday's law 1, we can conclude that when a constant conductor placed in a moving flux, EMF will be induced across the conductor. This is called statically induced EMF. So, this statically induced EMF, see here, this is a secondary winding. This secondary winding is constant. Here, there is a alternating flux or moving flux. So, the EMF will be induced across this, this conductor, across the conductor that is called E2 because secondary EMF. Because secondary EMF. This EMF causes to flow the current when the circuit is connected to the load. That current is called secondary current. So, it can be indicated by I2. So, primary current is indicated by I1. Primary voltage is indicated by V1. Primary EMF is indicated by E1. So, see here. There are number of turns in the winding. So, that can be represented by N. So, N1 means number of turns in the primary winding. N2 is the number of turns in the secondary winding. Clear? Now, we will move to the induced EMF. How much EMF is induced in the secondary winding? We have to derive the equation. See here, already we, I, I draw this waveform, flux waveform with respect to omega t that is alternating waveform. Now, let us consider N1 is the number of turns in the primary winding, N2 is the number of turns in the secondary winding, phi m is the maximum flux induced in the core, maximum flux in the core that is phi m, but phi m is, is equal to B m into A. B m means maximum flux density, A is the area of the core. Okay, now coming to the F frequency, input frequency that is HS, from Faraday's second law, it can say that induced EMF is minus N d phi by dt, the rate of change of flux d phi by dt. N means number of turns in the winding if there is a coil. A sinusoidal varying flux is represented as 
so alternative flux can be represented as phi is equal to phi m sin omega t this is a sinusoidal waveform so we can represent phi is equal to phi m sin omega t now we have to substitute this phi equation in emf equation then e is equal to minus n d by dt phi m sin omega t so we can derivate the sin quantity then the derivation of sin quantity is cos so minus n phi m sin omega t can be replaced by cos omega t in the place of omega t the derivation of omega t is omega now we can write it as e is equal to minus n phi m in one to omega cos omega t can be replaced by cos omega t can be written as sin omega t minus 90 so see here 90 can be replaced by minus pi by 2 okay right this is actually we can replace this as a 90 minus omega t 90 minus theta theta means it is omega t so sin 90 minus theta can be replaced uh, can be written as minus minus sin omega t minus 90 so finally i can say that e is equal to minus minus cancel so e is equal to n phi m omega sin omega t minus 90 are you clear so this equation of e in the form of e is equal to em sin omega t minus theta so by comparing these two equations by comparing these two equations we can write em maximum emf em is equal to n phi m omega okay are you clear n phi m omega in the place of em so see here m is equal to n phi omega but where omega is equal to 2 pi f so 2 phi 2 pi f em em means maximum emf okay but we have to calculate the emf or measure the emf in rms only so we have to convert this maximum emf into the rms quantity so rms voltage is always 1 by root 2 times of its maximum value erms is equal to em by root 2 this is the formula for rms right now erms erms is equal to em by root 2 where em is the n phi 2 pi f by root 2 we can write it as a 4.44 phi m f into n we can write erms is equal to em means n phi 2 pi f by root 2 this is the erms by calculating the 2 by root 2 we can write it as 4.44 phi m f into n this is the erms equation in volts clear now there are two windings in a transformer see here there are two windings in a transformer primary winding secondary winding there is a emf induced in the primary winding that is called e1 secondary emf is called e2 so we have to calculate the e1 and e2 in emf in the both the windings so the rms value of induced emf in the whole primary winding can be written as it is equal to induced emf per turn 4.44 fm into 5 so number of turns number of turns in the primary side that is n1 so emf per turn is called e 4.44 f into 5 number of turns in the primary winding is n1 so finally this is the formula emf induced in the primary winding similarly in the secondary winding just replace in the place of n1 by n2 n2 is the number of turns in the secondary winding so emf is always depending upon the number of turns in the winding now these emf equations can be written as 4.44 fn1 in the place of phi bm into a bm means maximum flux density a means area so for an, an ideal transformer an ideal transformer on no load v1 is always is equal to e1 v2 is equal to e2 because for an ideal transformer there is no losses in a transformer see here this is v1 this is e1 v1 means applied voltage e1 means induced emf e2 is the induced emf v2 is the load voltage so if there are no losses between the v1 and e1 then v1 is always equal to e1 e2 is always equal to v2 i hope you can understand this this concept thank you guys thank you very much